Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are. It's another Nudge Coach Happy Hour. My name's Phil Bean. I'm here with the one and only Matt Gamble. And we've had a hell of a busy week, so we are just going to jump into whatever comes to the top of our minds today. It's going to be awesome, folks. We may even talk about some free stuff, actually. We just just touched base on this. But um, how's it going over there, Mac? Good, good. We are, we are in separate states today. I realize you are down in South Carolina still, aren't you? That's right. If you're wondering why I'm in a, a bedroom or a hotel suite, um, yes, this is the kind of little guest quarters of my uh, in-laws house so hopefully (laughs) we don't get interrupted by any kids or anything crazy like that but we'll see how it goes wouldn't be a podcast without an interruption so that's right they don't call this suboptimal media for anything suboptimal media i like it i like it well i think a lot happened this week first off let me give a quick shout out to dr craig so i got a compliment from someone yesterday who listens to our podcast and has their own podcast and certainly appreciate it. Always appreciate the kind words people give us. And uh, yeah, any thoughts, feedback, ideas, let us know. Because we kind of just talk about whatever came up in the world of coaching that week. There you go. Dr. Craig, shout out. Um, yeah. See, it's that easy, guys. If you compliment us, we're suckers. We'll, we'll throw your name out. Name drop. <laughs> name drop. The other big thing that happened this week that happened yesterday, which was an incredible compliment. Everyone knows I'm a big Marvel fan. Uh, someone thought I looked like the actor that plays Vision in the Avengers movies. Whoa. I know. Big time. Big time. Is anybody watching on YouTube right now? What do you think? <laughs> in the comments section below. In the comments section below. <laughs> so not when he's like wearing all of his, like he's decked out in all his, you know, all his uh, outfit or whatnot, but just the actor himself. And I can't remember his name. It's the guy from Wimbledon. I can't remember. Yeah. No, I don't know that guy's name either, but I... I think I can see where they're they're going with that. Um, also, we should just test it out and try to get you that outfit and see if you can see, pull it off. Yep, yep. I have decided post COVID, I do want to throw a Halloween party where everyone comes as a Marvel character. So uh, done and done. Putting it putting it on the docket. So I guess we need to get into coaching now. Yeah, uh, do we? All right, here we are. Um, so one of the things that came up a bit this week is a couple of our partners trying to launch some interesting models. Yep. Um, I'd say, was it both of or a few of these, all of them involving some type of free programming on the front end and, and trying to navigate how they're going to set up these workflows to kind of potentially convert a lot of new business. Um, so we figured, although we have not prepped for this at all, we're going to dive in and talk about freemium models for coaches. This is going to be fun for us. This is premium for coaches. Favorite things. It's, it's premium models. <laughs> pretty incredible because I I think there has been years ago, I think there was a stigma of, hey, my, you know, tr- I, I think coach, there was a movement where I felt like coaches were kind of thinking they were undervaluing themselves. And so there was a big movement of, hey, you know, you know, you need to, you need to place more value in yourself. You need to up your rates. You need to do all this stuff. And like, I, I completely agree in a way that like, you know, don't undervalue yourself. But as you know, I love freemium models and I think there's a huge opportunity here. So to give some context, few of our partners that we're going through implementation with right now, doing some pretty neat things, exploring, even doing a white label with us with no basically open. So anyone can get in kind of process and then have a content drip much like you'd see within an email campaign with the idea that you've got content, the idea that you've got maybe calls to action in there to try to get people to book calls. And the idea is, I think people have been doing something like this already in a way through email automation. I mean, I guess, where's the line? Here's a question for you. Where's the line? If you think about what historically has been done over the past few years, where a person goes to a coach's website, you know, downloads their downloadable doc, you know, whatever it is, recipes or 10 tips for something, goes on the email list and then starts getting nurtured with free content to the point of taking some kind of action. Could you argue, is that freemium? That's that's probably a form of freemium. It depends on how much you're doing. So mm. one of the things that um, I'd say comes up a lot is sort of a, a I, I, you sort of alluded to this, but it's sort of a fear of um, putting too much out there, right? Um, too much out there for free. Um, that's for some reason an instinct that a lot of it, not just coaches, but coaches especially because they feel like their expertise is their value mm-hmm. in a lot of time, a lot of times. Um so there's always some hesitation there. Um, I always swing as far the other way as one possibly could. Um, yeah. And 
the reason for that is, you know, there's information everywhere on the internet. It's, it's like, you know, if you really think about it, someone could go and find almost anything that you're going to teach them somewhere on the internet. Your value is that you're going to organize it to, for them in the right order and you're going to guide them through it. Right. Mm-hmm. So you don't necessarily need to fear uh, putting out too much information in my opinion. So, but to get back to your specific question, I think, you know, even those nurturing campaigns, they could be looked at as a, a freemium model. I think it gets all the more interesting though, when you start to bake it into a, an app that is where you're kind of upgrading people into is mm-hmm. this coaching experience inside an app. So the free content built into the app, is that a bridge too far? Um, a lot of, you know, too much content. Is there a, a too much content that's too far on the front end, mm-hmm. even if it's just an email drip? There's a lot of stuff that's being explored right now. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I know we used at one point in time, if we did a kind of a teaser course mm-hmm. that was our primary, I think, lead capture for, geez, I feel like it was over a year um, yeah, that we yeah. gave access to for it was kind of a little teaser course for online coaching. And so I think we're seeing bits and pieces like this. And I think that's where course type or recorded video can work well in that kind of setting. And I think to your point of like app, you know, delivery through app, does that, you know, where, where does that mean the line now falls? Um, But it seems like in general, what I would say from where I sit and I work pretty closely with all of our implementation partners that we're starting to see more and more coaches and coaching businesses taking a step towards freemium models one way however you want to slice it or, or classify it i would say it's freemium even if if they hadn't i think freemium right now so many people have in their mind freemium like games on the app store um and so they i don't think they there's a natural kind of disassociation i feel like with their business but i i would actually argue yes you're not doing free kind of sessions like this like you know like you and i are on video right now mm-hmm. but in terms of the value in your content, I'd, I'd argue that a lot of coaching businesses are actually in freemium. Yeah. Is a newsletter freemium? It kind of is. Kind of is. <laughs> um, but the, it's the content, right? It's the scalable stuff. Um, that's that's kind of the the line I think that at least needs to be drawn, right? Is not giving away your time, but giving away, mm-hmm. um, you know, a taste of the expertise you have. Helps you build trust. It's how you get people there. Um, there's a lot of trust that needs to be built up in order to uh convince someone that you're mm-hmm. the right expert for them. You know, you can Absolutely. guide them to where they want to go. So I think it's a good strategy. Um, what I'm loving about the exploring the idea of doing this more in the app with our clients is that, you know, it, it really breaks down any additional barrier that there may be between the sort of, okay, I'm sampling the goods here and I want to jump to, you know, the full, paid whatever program or whatever it Mm -hmm. is there's no technological barrier there anymore um it kind of takes that out right if you're going from you know a drip email sequence to -to one-to-one coaching through an app there's the kind of decision barrier but there's also kind of the onboarding on the technology barrier Mm -hmm. setting expectations barrier there's all these barriers that you have to break through all kind of in one go Um, one benefit potentially of running kind of a a freemium level program, free, free level program that's light just through an app is that you get people on the app first. They've kind of taken that first step, broken down that, that technology barrier, at least Mm -hmm. Um, they see how you're, how you can give them content through an app. That's cool. Um, So they're getting kind of a taste of all of this and learning how it works on the go on the, on the way as they go through the process. And then when they, are ready to take the next step when you do um, upsell them in this case to a paid uh, program, you know, it's just, Hey, these are the specific expectations for interacting with me. This is how Mm -hmm. I'm going to interact with you going forward. You already have the app. You already know how to use it. Um, And here's what's coming in terms of the programming here, the steps I'm going to guide you through to get to where you want to go. So it, it breaks down some of those extra barriers to um, make it easier for you to get through the, like, um, the step where they just bought something and they might be freaking out and they have a bunch of steps in front of them. Um, the kind of panic right after purchase that can happen. I think having less of those barriers in place at that step can be helpful. So I'm interested to see as we do more of this, mm. how those conversion rates look. Yeah. One thing I'd maybe touch on too, is just the importance of kind of 
continuity or alignment between your freemium and the what you know what a person is actually getting when they start paying. So, good example would be like if I think to your point of the app, right? You get a person on the app. If we're if we're using us as an example, that's how the people you get people kind of consuming the content on the free plan. Well, the extension of that and the upgrade is they are still using that vehicle for community for content delivery. Now they just have that bolt on of having, whoa, there's a, you know, I'm actually getting one-to-one guidance and feedback from my coach on the other end. Mm-hmm. So I think there's kind of a nice, it's a very logical like enhancement or upgrade to where, where that person was. Yeah. So I think just be really, my two cents would just be very cognizant with how, if, if you are kind of using a freemium that also too, why we see people use steps challenges on our platform sometimes, Hey, it's a great way to get the app on their phone, get them tracking things. Mm-hmm. And then the bolt on is the coaching piece to kind of accompany that idea of tracking. So that's, that's where step challenges are so awesome because you, you identify people that are open to tracking, open to app use, things like that. Um, so I would just be saying, think about that as you think about your freemium. So if you're engaging a lot of people through, you know, say social media or through email before your contractual relationship, and then you do something completely different once a person signs with you, just be thinking about that in terms of the ways in which you engage. Because if some people are really taken to you from maybe your email content or your social media content, but then you're going to be engaging with them in a totally different way, they may not actually be great clients for you. And I think that's a question to maybe ask yourself and just make sure you have that continuity. I think you might've just taught me something. So um, that's such a good point. I, I'm not sure I'd totally wrap my head around that myself even. Um, and we may be guilty of some of this as well. But for example, someone who is really into a newsletter. Um, They're good probably, at opening emails. They're probably really good, good at opening emails, yeah. enjoys that kind of medium, that type of communication, has time to read those, those newsletters, all that good stuff. Jumping them into an app that's all about tracking daily habits or, you know, yeah. interaction on the go, stuff like that. They might not even be comfortable on their phone. Maybe they're opening on the, all these emails on their desktop. Um, there could be some real whiplash there. And you're right. It's actually a, a kind of a good qualification step just to get them on the app to show that that's a way that they like to receive mm-hmm. content. I mean, that's that's kind of fantastic. This is why you just talk about ideas sometimes on a podcast just live. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think we're going to see more of this where companies that have more of an established brand, especially as they're, you know, using something like us, like the Nudge Coach platform are going to be exploring different models like this to make sure that their prospects, their leads coming in align with the type of offering they're trying to create. Because I I do think there is sometimes a disconnect between how, how a brand engages prospects and leads and their audience versus how they actually engage with customers. And I think the more you can make that kind of a logical kind of like stair step approach, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to simplify and remove a lot of the friction points in that, in that buying process and engagement. Yeah. Yeah. You're, we've talked about this before and we may even be guilty of breaking this rule every now and then, but your, your promotion should, your promotional strategy should align very closely with the actual program or product that you're delivering. Um, and the medium of the content is one of those pieces. You can break, you'll hear marketers talk about personas all the time. Personas are not just like age groups and demographics. It's also how they consume their content. Mm-hmm. Like um, I am a persona that doesn't love email. I, I frankly suck at email, to be honest with you. Well um, documented, well but, <laughs> documented. Phil does not like email. <laughs> Touchy subject for Mac because he has to deal with my crap all the time. Um, uh, but like, like email. Yeah, but having a Slack app on my phone where I, I get pinged and just respond to Slack messages on my phone, that helps me break through that that barrier. Mm-hmm. My persona is better served by the mobile yeah. app experience. So um, that's where I think if if we were doing so, or if like I was set trying to sell you some kind of service in which you know there was some type of like Slack group you had access to, I think that would make a lot of sense for your type of persona. Exactly. Yeah. I think everybody just heard my dog just shake. shake. The dog shake. The dog. That's a great sound bite for the. Uh, yeah, we, we the can podcast. we can cut out that little sound bite and use that at different times. We or we, maybe when someone says something confusing. That's such a unique sound too. I think you could have that, and anyone would recognize what that sound is. <laughs> the dog shake. Uh, easily distractible. That's also my mm-hmm. persona. Um, yeah. Oh, I think that's a really interesting insight. Um, and 
Yeah, I would expect actually, as we get into this further mm-hmm. with uh, these partners of ours that we potentially see, um, you know, what will the conversion rate be to get people on the app in the first place? Maybe that we find that harder. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, but once we get people on the app, I bet the conversion rate to a premium service, whatever that is, mm-hmm. um, for these partners is going to be higher. I can almost guarantee it. And the engagement for those people who do convert probably yeah. even higher. Um, I think so. I think one thing to touch on too, because this, this terminology and this idea may not be something that a lot of coaches are thinking about, but there's a concept called assisted conversion. And so this is what we do with Nudge Coach. And I, I am a huge advocate of assisted conversions because I think early on, you don't know what you don't know. And you kind of just have to have a lot of conversations with people to figure out kind of what's going on. So you kind of kind of cover your gaps and cover your bases that way. So what we do is when someone signs up, we try to get everyone to book a call with someone from our team because we want to build that relationship. It helps us get feedback. It also helps build that rapport and it makes it easy for us to get a person to a point. It makes sense for conversion. So I think taking that concept for the, really that idea of assisted means you're, you're getting, you're having some kind of follow-up with these leads, these prospects. So if you're doing some kind of freemium as we're calling it, and whether it's email or whether it's, you know, you're having them consume content through an app or whatnot. Um, I would recommend driving them to a comp, to a call in terms of trying to help drive conversion. I think if you're just trying to drive them through like passive content to a purchase page, you're, you're going to have, you know, it's going to have a much lower conversion rate. And at first, you know, it may not be the most scalable. I'm a huge advocate of do things that don't scale to that mantra. I think it's just so fantastic. So something to think about assisted conversion. Um, you know, I think over time you can see much better results from it. Yes. There's some scalability things you may need to think about long-term, but ultimately driving people to book a call. Just think if 10 people booked a call with you, um, how many do you think you could get to convert into your coaching offering versus if you were just sending, you know, a hundred people, whatever it would take for the conversion to just to a landing page to make a purchase. It's just a, that step can sometimes be tough and you may not know, maybe your page just isn't effective for some reason. Maybe your button layout's weird or the page is confusing. You won't know that until you have conversations with people. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Human connection conversations are probably the most effective vehicle for conversions, for sure, by a long shot. Um, I mean, it's not uncommon to see a landing page for a paid program that you push people to have something like a 0.2% conversion rate. Just throwing that number out there for people. Like, that's not nuts. So if you imagine how many people you have to get to that page to convert enough people to make your business sustainable... um, that's that gets pretty serious pretty fast. So if you if you're dealing with high volume, more power to you. Pump them through there if that's what you need to do, and you want to keep kind of your team lean. Um, but that's where assisted conversion, a free consult, is the way that it often takes shape in a coaching business. Um, incredibly valuable because, like like you said, Mac, if you can get get actually your your face or your voice um, in front of those people at the very least there's a whole other level of connection that's built there and trust builds a lot faster. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can do a lot with phone calls and and it's sometimes, you know, at first you may not, it may take some practice and some refinement, but I think pretty quickly you'll figure out what, what is working and what's not working. Cause to your point, freemium conversion is all over the map. I mean, you see some companies that, you know, to your point may be struggling to get a 1% conversion on, on freemium, meaning that you have a hundred people sign up for, let's say you sign up for your newsletter or sign up for your, your, you know, automated content through the net, through the app, the free access to it of those hundred, maybe only one of those people convert. Um, you've got some companies, companies like Dropbox, Spotify that have really kind of blown the doors off it. And they're kind of North of 20%. So they've kind of figured it out, but that's rare. I mean, and that, and that is something to be aware of. So if you're going to think about those hundred people, you know, the cost of it, took you to get those a hundred eyeballs or sets of eyeballs coming to your page or what, whatnot. You want to make sure you're making the most of those hundred people. Um, I'm a big believer, especially early on, throw as much as you can to get those people to convert because you're going to learn throughout the process. Yep. No doubt about it. Um, so I guess some interesting questions to fill in some gaps here. You know, we've been talking about pump people into your app. What we mean by that, by the way, you can customize an app at nudgecoach.com. Just go and do it right now. You'll see what we mean. There's a free tier. Um, But 
what are the types of content that you could potentially transition into that kind of free tier in a coaching program is, a, is an interesting question. I think we've touched on at least one already. If you have kind of a email nurturing workflow, that could be pretty easy to translate into, you know, cards that are delivered, yeah. pieces of content that are delivered, dripped over time through an app. No problem. That literally came up in an implementation this week is the first step one of our partners is doing is taking their, I think their MailChimp campaign and building in the cards in the app. Yep. Here's another example. If you have a, a already kind of a free tier to an online course, or it may be like a little mini course, something like that. You'll see that kind of stuff a lot. Great example of something, especially if there's video content that could be really awesome inside mm-hmm. an app. Um, drop in a drip of that. Um, or, you know, every couple of days drop in something like that. Uh, that could be a great free tier as well. Um, and kind of interspersing that with, again, call to action to book a free consult, learn more, talk more about the value of what you're delivering um, through your actual coaching services. Um, yeah, those are, those are two, two examples off the top of my head. I'm trying to think of any more. Well, I think, so one, one thing I would think about too, because I always tell people, if you're thinking going the app direction, it's it, when you launch an app, watch as zero people download it. Like people aren't just going to magically get there. I think the workflow I'm seeing that can work fairly well is something even along the lines of, you know, if you have a land, if a website and you still have a nice lead capture, say you have a downloadable document or people signing up for webinars or whatever you're doing, you have their email address, um, maybe even using that, like using your email campaign, making it a lot lighter just to kind of direct people to your app to start engaging with you in that way. We have some partners that are big on social media, the same type thing, using Instagram to kind of drive people to their app. So you know, keep engaging people at the top of the funnel, kind of the way you are to then get them into the app. So that way you're kind of, as we talked about kind of a progression, you know, you've got your initial content, you know, whether it's on your website or your blog or your, you know, Instagram or social media, that's kind of whatever that content is, make sure that kind of then feeds into the, whatever the free experience is. So Mm -hmm. kind of however you're catching the lead, if it's based on, Hey, nutritional tips to, I'm just going to make something up. To, to sleep better or something like that. Yeah. Okay, well, that may be the first content piece and you know that's what a person's focused on. Well, then make sure the, to your point of like a teaser course or a mini course, make sure it kind of complements that content that a person was initially kind of a, attracted to. And I think that's where, you know, we you, you see it in marketing all the time is, I think a lot of companies struggle with that in general is that continuity and consistency so I would say if, if you're looking at freemium, just make sure it really weaves into the product you're selling and how you're capturing leads. It's kind of yeah. like that bridge. Yeah. If you're taking people through a journey, it, they're going to they're gonna be able to tell if the road veers way off to the left at some point, for sure. Um, that's always going to feel like a wrong turn. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a really great point. And it's honestly, it takes, you know, some discipline to have that mapped out really well. And you'll find if you try to like, weave things in, uh, you may have to re-engineer other steps to make it work, which is totally Mm -hmm. fine. Just make sure you end up with alignment and that's great. Um, but man, some really great, great points in here. Um, I'm excited about seeing more people try this out. Yeah. As we get further into some of these implementations too, I'll kind of share more thoughts that come up because it, it's something that I think for a while within the app, we were kind of cautious about because I think we, we know people don't just download apps out of the app store you know, that, they, that they don't know. That just doesn't happen for most people. You, you have to have kind of a way in, like, you know, you have to have kind of the foundation in place and you have to have the knowledge to understand how to then convert free users. And I think that's where we see a lot of, I think a lot of coaches have really struggled with that over a long period of time. But I think coaching in general, coaches are getting more savvy at marketing. And I think there's a huge opportunity now to really create some pretty neat funnels and some neat kind of, um, I don't even, I guess, client journeys that's starting with kind of the prospect stage. Yeah. Yep. And that's it. If we crack that, folks, you've got yourself a business on your hands. If you can get people from, you know, learning about you through your website to the point that trust is built or learning about you through your Instagram to the point that trust is built, um, call to action is clean go check out the app. Here's the free, whatever, uh, version of the app. Go get that intersperse that content with calls to action about the value of your personal services and, and paid programming, book that free consult, convert them and we're cooking. Assisted conversion. Assisted conversion. L- let it ring. Let um, it ring. this could, so I'm, I'm, 
tinkering with the idea, Sarah Phillip put this in my head of uh, creating an online coaching di- dictionary on our website. I like uh, it. So I think we we may have to include some some freemium for coaches terms in there. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Also, makes this sense. sounds like a blog post that you're going to write for us. What are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That is a good idea. That is a good idea. We'll talk about freemium and coaching. Freemium and coaching. Yeah, why not, right? Okay. Um, yeah, and we can give it a little time to see how some of the results come in from some of these clients that are rolling things out. If you're wondering why we're talking like this, you know, we rolled out this major update to our platform about a month ago. So a lot of these adjustments that are happening are pretty new. Um, so we'll be tracking these and it'll be a fun kind of living experiment that you guys get to listen to as we, uh, tinker with these customers. Absolutely. Well, I, th- well, I think that's it. I think it's time for Instagram, 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 Instagram live. Um, Instagram Mac, Instagram Mac. <laughs> I didn't even mean to say that. Wait, that could be your new nickname, Instagram Mac. Um, What's funny about that is I don't even post it on Instagram <laughs> much other than when we do our Instagram lives or if our cat is doing something funny that I think deserves to be on Instagram. Well, that's the, I think the purpose of Instagram is to post what your cat's doing. Cats right. and Instagram live. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So check us out there. Mac underscore Gambill. Uh, that's M-A-C underscore G-A-M-B-I-L-L. Um, you can check out the YouTube channel, Nudge Coach, Nudge Coach Happy Hour, and all your favorite podcasting apps. And we will see you again next time.